Welcome back subscribers and hello YouTube viewers. On this occasion, we're off to Plumpton, Victoria, Australia. It is located about a 35 minute drive. It's about 40 odd kilometers northwest of the state's capital, Melbourne. Now, today is just like any other day and I wanted to see how far the suburban sprawl has sort of reached out to some of these regional and country towns. And this is probably a classic example of maybe one, it's not 100% sure, mainly surmising, but a lot of these farm properties have been bought up and abandoned. And it does appear to be a situation where developers are already planning their next huge residential estates in the sort of, well, I don't think you'd actually call it a rural area anymore. But anyway, I found two uh, homes that are uh, obviously abandoned and one of the things I really would like to note out to people who come out to these places if there are any signs whatsoever saying do not enter trespassers will be prosecuted um, do not open lock gates or force things open and on this occasion both of these premises were void of any such information or such locks or boundaries uh, basically I walked up to the door and was hoping that, well, obviously I wasn't hoping, but there was no way anyone was living in this particular home or the next one we're about to see, to some effort to, at one stage, make this house livable. You'll notice that just about every wall or every room has a different color. Um, it's in relatively good order, other than the, the graffiti and maybe a vandal or two have made their way into this home. But at one stage, this would have been someone's home and that's why once again I'm only surmising um, that a developer has bought up all the land and not put a tenant in here because I'm, I'm assuming that someone might have been able to rent out this place. All the electricals have been updated and a little bit further in this film you'll see that there is a, a modern circuit board to this property. Yes it has been damaged but at some stage uh, it was updated. But nonetheless, let's wander around and let's see what we can see at this first property. Now, as we look around in this particular abandoned home, any valuables have been stripped. And I'm talking about like fittings and fixtures, light fittings, taps, uh, copper piping, even some of the wiring has been ripped out uh, to recycle some of those uh, wire wires, um, or copper wires, I should say. Anything else that sort of wasn't <laughs> valuable has just been left. Uh, the structure of the house seems fine, uh, there is a fair few damaged windows, there are a lot of outhouses and we will explore them as well and it's pretty hard to really gauge what this property was all about. I'm sure people will be able to straight away point out uh, what certain sheds were used for, like that could have been a chicken shed or is it um, something that we put a dog in there, uh, I'm not 100% sure. It does look like uh, a fair few outbid buildings that were used some sort of livestock, be it a piggery, I have no idea, um, but definitely livestock. There's one that's sort of made out of concrete, as in the walls, to a certain height, while another one just looks like a, a regular uh, farmhouse that you'd probably keep a cow or two in, or maybe goats. I have no idea. Your, good is, your guess is as good as mine and probably better if you are from a uh, regional or a farming sort of background. See, once again, these are all made out of concrete. I have no idea. I'm not sure if those boxes are used for uh, bees, if you kept a hive or something, no idea. There's a fair bit of interesting graffiti. Well, not graffiti, I guess um, it was just rubbish, uh, as in brochures and uh, pamphlets that I guess someone neglected to uh, deliver to people's homes and they got dumped in the shed. 
So here we have another shed. I'm guessing that's probably for the farm tractor. Um, not 100% sure, still just guessing. But it seems such a waste. Um, if the developers have purchased this property, they're obviously waiting uh, for the right time. And then you come across these giant um, steel uh, tanks. Now, I could only guess it can only be used for two things. Either it was for fuel of some sort, like diesel, um, or was it used for water? But I'm more inclined to think it was more for fuel for the uh, farm tractors and any other equipment that they had that required some sort of uh, fuel source. There are two of them actually at this property. And we'll have a look at another one further up. Once again, this is another shed that I'm not sure what it's used for. Um, obviously the wind had got to it and ripped off the roof. And this is what I assumed is somewhere where they kept cows or maybe horses. And I will poke my nose in there once I just pan around here. This is the second tank that was on the property. And I'll just poke myself through here with the camera. And these do look like stables of some sort. So yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe some of it was used as a chick, uh, chicken shed to have their own chickens. But then I thought this one, closer to the home, is more likely a chook shed. But then again, I don't know. Uh, a lot of the stuff that was probably in the house, that was by the previous tenant or landlord, such as the old couches and all that, they got thrown out. Here have where the windows have been smashed unnecessarily. And this is the circuit board or the meter for the electricity. So obviously at some stage, this has been updated with a more modern uh, fuse box that's also been tampered with. So there you go. It's just a, a humble little house in this humble little town, slowly being neglected. You just saw the, the satellite dish that was on the roof. So we're not talking, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. We're talking probably more closer to 20 years ago maybe even less when people actually lived here. I love the, uh, the cactus front um, garden. And here we are with the drone, and I'll give you an overview of the whole place. So as you can see, it is a huge property, just primed for development. You can see quite a number of roads going in there and courts and whatever. But I think maybe the developer's just waiting for maybe the um, use of land to change with pl uh, town planning. It might be still under the, uh, the rule of uh, farming. This is the neighbouring property. In the background there you've got a, a vineyard that uses a wheel, uh, windmill as their uh, centrepiece. And you can straight away see where some farmers have really, the greenery of the area, or in this particular farm now, obviously they use the land quite well, um, obviously for grain and whatnot. And then you've got this property and it really does stand out from the rest. I'm surprised that people don't, uh, well the owners, whoever owns this land, doesn't allow the neighbours to uh, put livestock on it just to keep the grass down. Or maybe that, that maybe they do do that. So anyway, so here we go, that's the stables. That was sort of some shed for equipment and then you've got the other shed that's sort of in the centre of your picture at the moment that I believe is probably used for the tractor and a harvester or whatever that was being used for. And then we come around to where the house is, and maybe the chicken coop as I mentioned, the garage is just there on the right of the house. And that's me, next to the red beast. Um, 
All the neighbouring properties are in really good order. You know, people obviously are farm proud, just like people who are house proud in the suburban areas. And you can see that this house and the uh, outbuildings are all going to be eventually demolished, either by the developer or, or nature just taking over. So we'll go off now to the next property that has a more sadder sort of scenario or what I surmise might have happened to it. And once again, uh, there's no signs to indicate not to enter. Uh, there's no trespassing signs. Uh, didn't have to jump over any fences or uh, sort of force an entry whatsoever. And I recommend people not doing that. I think uh, you're really on sort of a situation where you can get yourself in a bit of trouble if you force yourself into a property or ignore do not enter or CCT cameras are in place. The CCT cameras um, are one of those signs where I actually prefer to see on abandoned buildings only because then if someone is watching me they'll realise that I do have a camera in hand. My intentions are uh, nothing more than to take photographs and just explore. Um, the Ute can be a bit of a problem, I believe, because I think some people might assume that because I've rolled up in a Ute that I might be there to maybe steal things or reclaim things that have been left behind. And just to reassure everyone that watches my YouTube videos that that's not the case. One of the main reasons I bought that Ute um, is to put the motorbike on the back and hopefully once my son gets his license, he's just about to turn 18, and hopefully you'll see the both of us uh, rocking up to a town and removing the motorbikes and just touring around, say, two or three farms within sort of a, a 50 or 60K radius, and we can always put the uh, bikes back on the ute, and it also becomes a bit of a safety thing for us, so if we have a puncture or, or, or not in the middle of nowhere, we know that all we have to do is make it back to whatever town where we've parked our car. Now once again, this house that we're in right now is absolutely, has never been molested by uh, vandals or uh, graffitists or any such persons yet. Uh, from a distance it really does look like a house that is still being occupied. And I can only surmise two causes to why this has been abandoned. A, there was a large uh, fire or so it appears in the garage and it might have made its way into the roof um, or alternatively uh, there must have been an extremely uh, high winds that has basically ripped the whole roof off now once we get the drone in the air you'll see where the roof has landed so I'm sort of surmising that maybe the roof got ripped off from the house due to high winds and has caused an electrical some sort of short that started in the garage and made its way across the entire roof of the house. That's just a guess, could be totally wrong. It's just what I've sort of seen. And it looks like a really lovely house. It's structurally, the brickwork seems fine. Um, there's no sort of structural damage to the place, but the whole roof is missing. Um, I'm not sure if it's been uh, bought up by developers or not, and it would have been a quite a large family that lived here because I can see at least three large family rooms or lounge rooms in this property. There's even a separate sort of, uh, there's sort of two kitchens, either it's a summer kitchen or like they have in Europe or it's uh, like a granny flat. So this is what I've seen as like a second kitchen to this property. So there's the main one and then you've got this one. Maybe it was a family member that was living here. Uh, on you know, sort of slightly independent or not, no idea. And you can see most of the stuff has been just left behind. Um, anything that was probably worth keeping has been removed from the property. But if you just notice the brickwork as we go around and a lot of the framing for the glass, for the windows, they're still in good order as, the, as is the, uh, the porches and the balconies. It just seems like it just needs a new roof because the whole roof is missing and repair done to the garage area. Once again, 
I just want to keep reiterating that if you do somehow discover where this, these two properties are, uh, I'm not going to give away the actual address, uh, that if you do venture out here, um, you know, the only thing that you should be bringing with you is a camera uh, and a video. And once again, if the signs have been put up there to say, do not enter, um, I think you should respect that. Uh, and as I said, when I arrived, there was no such thing. As you can see, even the internal walls seem quite, quite good. I'm not sure if it's had any water damage if the fire brigade had put out the flames. But absolutely no one has been in this building. It doesn't appear that anyone's tried to uh, steal the uh, fittings and fixtures of any type. The walls haven't been uh, ripped apart to pull out any um, copper piping or electrical wiring. It looks like someone's just made a hasty escape, grabbed what they could out of the drawers, I'm assuming the owners have, and it's just been left. Now this bedroom is like the master bedroom and it neighbours the garage where I believe the fire took place and then spread through the, uh, the ceiling. This is the master room bathroom. This is pretty much the walk-in wardrobe prior to the, the, the ensuite. And as you can see the glass, even the mirrors haven't been damaged. Now the debris, I'm just assuming, is all the insulation that was once up in the ceiling. And as the roof got ripped off, all that collapsed through the plaster with the rain and whatnot. And there I am. Uh, I'm still second guessing what's going on here. But as you can see, there's no roof nowhere. But yeah, it's a, it's a huge family home. It really is a big sort of country homestead. It's all on one level. And as I mentioned, there's quite a number of living or rent, uh, lounge rooms in this property. And the view is absolutely pretty spectacular considering it's a flat area. There's a bit of a gully where the roads sort of dip and dive in front of the house. Uh, but the views in general, uh, you can see why they've pointed it in that direction. So there's the main road, and that goes down into a sort of like a gully. This is the front balcony. And still in great nick, the brickwork looks fantastic. And the front door's obviously been smashed out. There's the garage where I believe maybe there was some explosion, uh, or something's happened where it's forced that roller door just to buckle up and burst outwards. And this is the garage where I think either after the uh, roof had been blown off, something had caught, caught on fire. But once again, um, you have a good look at the brickwork and you really don't see any large cracks or it's somehow collapsed. Uh, definitely a fire. And it does appear that maybe the person was some sort of home mechanic or something as well. And here we go, this is the outside again. And I'll just make my way to the car again. And we'll throw up the drone to give you sort of like a bird's eye view of this location. There's the, there's their view. So here we have the drone going up. And as you can see, the whole roof is gone. Now, I haven't been able to work out when this occurred. Um, it must have been a huge disaster for the family that lived here. Hopefully no one got
got injured or or worse and there's your roof it's really been blown off there's your water tank um, not really many outhouses or sheds in the area but definitely on a, like a plateau looking down a little gully maybe a chook shed there who knows but it is a shame it really did look like a house that was um, that had a really sort of a big family you can tell there was children there um, and I'd say there's probably more than one or two generations living there or it was rented out uh, the back half to a, a, maybe a, a young family or something, I'm not sure. But once again, it really is a, a, a lovely home. It would have been, and it's a pity no one's put the effort into maybe put that roof in. That's where I can only surmise that maybe a developer's bought it now that's uh, a bit of a ruin. And this too could also be a, a new housing estate in the future if the developers have got their hands onto it. So there you go. See, the rest of the roof is, is quite secure. Um, it's just that middle bit that's been blown off. Whether or not it wasn't structurally made correctly, no idea. So there you go. So once again, we're nearing the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a bit different. Um, I do like exploring old buildings or old uh, factories uh, just to see and try to work out or even guess what might have happened um, but if you did like the video by all means click on that like button or that thumbs up icon and please subscribe subscribe it doesn't cost you one cent and it really does help this channel immensely um, and also if you can in the comments tell me if you like these sort of things um, is it worth you know showing you what sort of I have sort of a bit of interest in and please subscribe as I said it doesn't cost you a cent um, but most importantly once again uh, stay safe commute safe and have a great day